this episode, we're going to be looking at returning to sport safely after an ACL injury. So you're probably interested in getting back to your sport as quick as possible after ACL. And you're really not alone in this because returning to sport safely is crucial for both your performance and long-term health as well. And the benefits of doing this are a massive. Obviously, you regain confidence in the process. You can improve your athletic ability and also going to reduce the risk of re-injury, which can be significant if you're not following proper rehab protocols. But a lot of people rush this process and that can lead to a number of different issues along the way. One of those is obviously a fear of getting injured again. And that's a really big factor, particularly psychologically, if you're going to be going back to doing the same activity or you're going to be doing a similar activity to before, it means that you're going to basically have to get confident in your body doing the same sporting actions that caused the injury in the first place, which can be a big psychological obstacle to overcome. The other one is lack of proper guidance. If you just haven't really got much structure or much of a plan, then it's pretty difficult to know what it is you should be doing in a step-by-step format. One of the biggest challenges a lot of people face in ACL rehab is lack of certainty, not knowing when I'm going to get back, not knowing what I need to do each step and how long that's going to take and how likely it is that I'll hurt myself again. All those things can be addressed if you actually have a clear structured program and a clear protocol to follow that's based on numbers, not on just on pure emotion. So you, you can latch your certainty onto clear, defined numbers. Another challenge is the impatience with the recovery process. And that's very normal to be impatient with the lack of progress. But again, if you've got certainty of what it is you're trying to work towards, that's going to give you a lot more confidence and clarity in that outcome because you know exactly what it is you're trying to achieve. Otherwise, you will get disheartened if you're not making progress because you might not even know what it is you're working towards. So that's key. Another one is not really addressing why the injury happened in the first place and not having proper assessment. It's important that you have really clear protocols to follow. You're using evidence-based assessment so you know that if I achieve this score, then I am tick, good to go, and I can move forward. If I haven't met that score yet, I'm not good to go. And that, again, just means you've got this idea of, objectivity rather than subjectivity and that gives you confidence and clarity in that in that whole process and the last one then is looking at how fatigue and markers of over overuse essentially um, are not being listened to so by which i mean increased swelling in the knee if you've started to increase activity levels or maybe your fatigue levels and mood are starting to drop quite a bit that usually suggests that your exertion levels are too high your output is too high so that's another really key factor to identify early on. So those are sort of some of the common challenges, some of the common hurdles that people tend to face. And really there are kind of three key steps to follow if you want to get back to sport safely. The first is to start with proper rehab. Proper rehab, what I mean is working with a professional, being assessed properly, following a evidence-based protocol so you know that you have to hit certain markers before you can move forwards and also making sure that you're not just using time as the only factor i.e you know once you've got to 12 weeks post-surgery hey i'm good to go back to running well not so fast it might be two two outcomes here one might be that actually at 12 weeks you haven't achieved the scores yet that you need to achieve so it might be a little longer which is fine but again at least you know that or maybe you got the the scores fractionally faster than 12 weeks maybe you've actually uh, expedited that rehab process a little quicker than you'd hoped that's also great but on both scenarios what you're allowing yourself to do is to be a little bit more adaptable than simply time now time is an important factor to manage your expectations of how long things might take but you've also got to coincide that with criteria so you know okay if i've actually hit this marker at a certain point i can move forward but if i haven't yet that's okay and it's maybe going to take a couple more weeks going to reassess in two weeks and we'll we'll see if we've actually improved those scores again so that's really really key is making sure that you're following clear criteria along the way the other one is making sure that in your rehab process you're not just looking at isolated muscle work but you're actually looking at returning athletic capabilities to your body because you're an athlete you're trying to get back to your sport you're trying to get back to performance And if you haven't done the right kind of work, then your body is just not going to be ready for the demands of high intensity competition. So it's important you also make sure that you are including athletic movements, multi-joint movements, particularly in the return to sport phase, like just before you're going back to full sport, that you're incorporating plyometrics, that you're incorporating change of direction, sport-specific agility movements, 
and a cognitive element to a lot of those sporting skills as well. It's all well and good purely focusing on the physical, but are you also incorporating the cognitive component of you know, processing uh, human movement or the sporting specific skill that you're going to need to be able to do on the pitch? And going back to the point earlier, are you actually doing the sporting movement that caused the injury? Are you really confident in that? The final piece around the psychological component of recovery is making sure you're using an evidence-based assessment for your psychological confidence in the knee and your readiness for return. So your body might be ready, but your mind might still be holding you back, which is entirely normal. But things like the ACL RSI um, and other, um, other sort of assessments based on evidence and research-based evidence are really good tools to measure your confidence in the knee going back so you're actually clear and confident on what it is that you need to do and also that your body is ready and, and you're feeling confident in that knee. Because what happens is if your body is in a, is in a strong position, but you're still mentally not quite there yet, then you're not going to commit to those actions that potentially cause the injury, or maybe you're going to hold yourself back. And in doing so, that can actually lead to a higher risk of injury. So there's lots of factors here, but the key thing is just to make sure that you are clear on what it is you're doing and you've got a clear steps, clear protocol, you know exactly what it is you have to do and you're assessing both your body and your mentality around the injury so that when you return, you're absolutely confident that you've done everything you can to mitigate the risk of re-injury in the future. And we know that the risk of re-injury can be as great as um, up to sort of 30% higher, 40% higher um, if you're not following a proper rehab protocol. Some papers would even suggest it's as high as 80%. So there's a real risk here that if you're not following a proper protocol, you could injure yourself either in the same knee or the opposite knee, which is also a risk factor if you're not following a proper rehab protocol and you have these hidden asymmetries that can emerge. Now, step two is making sure you're gradually increasing the intensity because without gradually increasing intensity, you A, may risk hurting yourself more or might increase the swelling because you're suddenly increasing the amount that you're doing. And so managing the intensity, just as you would do in normal training and proper effective training is managing increases in intensity. So you're not suddenly just jumping by you know, X amount, you actually have a plan for this. You're going to you know, gradually increase by 5% a week, or whatever it is, you're going to try to increase the intensity by so that you can follow that. And again, you've got a clear plan and the plan needs to be adaptable so that maybe you perform week two's intensity and actually it's a little bit high. And then you can always bring things back slightly and that's fine, but just making sure you have that plan. So it's clear that you know what you're going to do if you do hit that obstacle and you're going to gradually increase the intensity over time. That's the most important thing of all. And pushing too fast can essentially just lead to setbacks and those setbacks can lead to confidence knocks and your trust and belief in the rehab process. So it's really key that you are gradually increasing things over time. The third one then is focusing on preventative measures and making sure that you are basically building in preventative work once you're going back to sport as well. It's all well and good going back to the sport, but that's where sometimes athletes will stop doing their rehab altogether and all the good work they've done to get their body in the position to go back to sport um, is just essentially stopped because you think, right, that's me, I'm, I'm good to go. But again, a lot of research would suggest there is a very high risk of re-injury unless you are performing ongoing rehab work, ongoing prehab work to prevent the risk of re-injury in the future. And this can look like, you know, proper effective strength and conditioning training. So you're making sure you're incorporating all the elements that got you to the position you were in to return to sport, but ensuring your body isn't just then um, stopping and not continuing that work. And then the risk of re-injury will obviously go up there and incorporating corrective exercises, proper techniques and athletic movements again is really, really key. So even though you've gone back, making sure you're still incorporating your plyometric work, your agility work, your speed work, all things that all athletes need to incorporate into their training in some capacity it's vital you're including that to make sure that you're actually in a position to go back and continue playing sport without risking re-injury in the future. So I hope that's just a, a very useful and brief overview of three key things that you need to focus on to return to sport safely. And that was proper rehab with a professional, gradual increases in intensity and focusing on preventative measures so that when you're going back, you're not going to risk re-injury in the future because you're just going to stop all of that training and undo all of that good work that got you to the position where you can actually get back to sport safely 
So you're able to go back to sport with confidence and clarity without the risk of re-injury in the future.